Good afternoon and welcome at this webinar of Big Progress. Um, together with Hamlet Protein today, we are live in Amsterdam. Time is uh, th uh, 3.30 here and it's a grey day in Amsterdam. Um, we hope nevertheless to bring some inspiration today at this webinar. Um, <clears throat> my name is Vincent Tebeek, I'm editor for Big Progress and I shall be the host for the next coming hour. Today we shall talk about the, the effect of dietary stress at weaning. And as you all know, weaning is a challenging time for piglets. There's a lot of things happening at the same time. Their mothers go away, different kind of feed, different kind of pen mates. All these things lead to a difficult situation and a lot of bad things can happen, as you all know. This webinar will zoom in on one specific aspect of around weaning and let's take a look at what's happening inside the piglet, what's going on with things like, for instance, oxidative stress and inflammation, and we'll take a look at how nutritional components can perhaps solve that problem. Um, for those of you who have never done a webinar, attended a webinar before, let me briefly go through the technology today. You will see in your screen a place where there is the, 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 um, the presentation of the speaker and the slides will be presented to you. Um, Below that, you will see an option to ask your questions, and we love interactivity, so please, if there is anything that you would like to ask to our speakers, fill them out straight away, because we could answer them here in the studio. Thirdly, um, below me, you will see a box where there is the, the, the different chapters of the speakers, and from time to time, also poll questions will appear here. Um, you are kindly invited to answer these poll questions, because um, then we can test how our audience thinks about certain things. Okay, so far for the technology, let me go to the first speaker of today, and that is Dr. Astrid de Greef. Um, she is a researcher at Wageningen Bioveterinary uh, Research, and her focus today is I'll talk about changes in the gut microbiota in piglets. Dr. de Greef, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Vincent. The title of my talk today will be The Window of Opportunity to Induce Changes in Intestinal Development. But before I start, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Astrid de Geef and I work as a researcher and business developer at Wageningen Bioveterinary Research. I'm a medical biologist by training. I studied in Utrecht at Utrecht University and I obtained my PhD degree on the pathogenesis of Streptococcus suis infections in pigs. I'm an expert on prevention of veterinary infectious diseases and on specified health management to improve gut health of livestock. And the latter topic will be addressed in this talk. Wageningen Bioveterinary Research is part of Wageningen University and Research. And the organization consists of five science groups, agrotechnology and food sciences, animal sciences, environmental sciences, plant sciences and social sciences. And every science group consists of an academic department and an applied research institute. Wageningen Bioveterinary Research is a research institute of the Animal Sciences Group. But as such, we do have access to the knowledge of the total Wageningen University and Research Organization. Within Wageningen Bioveterinary Research, we safeguard public and animal health through veterinary and biomedical research. We try to prevent and treat infectious diseases. I would like to start with the take home message of my talk, so you know where the focus will be. Interventions early in life or in utero shape the intestinal development and microbiota composition. And there is a window of opportunity for this, and I will come back to that. Interventions early in life potentially have long lasting effects on gut health. Gut microbiota is very important. And early life feed interventions can infect intestinal and immunological development. First of all, let me give you a definition of the window of opportunity. If you say that there is a window of opportunity for something, you mean that there is an opportunity to do something, but that this opportunity will only last for a short time. And so it needs to be taken advantage of quickly. Now let's move to gut health. Gut health is composed of the triangle you see in the middle, microbiota, the host, and feed components, and they interact with each other. Feed comes into the system and excreta comes out of the system. And due to the interaction of the microbiota, the host, and the feed, 
digestive efficiency is determined, as well as immune competence. Together, these two factors determine animal performance. How can we affect this whole system? There are several environmental factors that have strong effects on the gut. For example, pathogens, toxins, different kinds of treatments, but also social interactions of animals, stress conditions, and housing conditions can affect the gut, the microbiota, the feed, or the host. The gut microbiota is teaching the immune system how to recognize friend from foe. And since 75% of the immune system is located in the gut, you can imagine that both the microbiota and the local immune system are very important to determine health of the animal. The microbiota consists of 10 to the 14th bacteria. This is even more than there are cells in the intestine. These bacteria consist of 800 to 1200 different species. How can we do microbiota management? I really like this picture because it gives a very clear view of what is going on. Microbiota can be considered an ecosystem that needs to be balanced by good management, just like a garden. On the upper left picture, you see a garden, a nice green grass field, which is perfectly balanced. This is a flourishing gut ecosystem. If something happens like a flood or drought or devastation by antibiotics, you will end up with a barren land, nothing grows. And if you do nothing about it and leave it alone, weed-like species will run wild and the balance is completely disturbed. What can we do about that? We could treat with prebiotics, here depicted as grass seed. So we seed new grass that will restore the ecosystem. Or we could use prebiotics, turf, that will feed the remaining grass and will also restore the ecosystem. Finally, you can introduce a totally new grass and in this way restore the ecosystem. That is what we call the bacteriotherapy. Now I would like to ask you a question. Okay, and here we go with the questions. <clears throat> um, you can vote right now. What would be the best moment for microbiota management? Is that A, when the disease occurs, B, early in life, C, at transition moments, or D, any time? It's a good time. Well, we have the first answers already coming in. I'll let the voters and the viewers try for a couple of more, more seconds to see what they, what they answer. But there is a clear preference for early in life. That's, uh, that's getting there. Yeah, I'm closing the poll now so we can have a quick look at it. Um, the number of answers, yes, suggested about 76%. I'll display the results here. Yeah, now it's just gone down a little bit. 71% uh, of, the, of the viewers uh, go for the answer early in life. Is that surprising to you or do you think that's exactly what I had expected? Oh, thank you, Vincent. Uh, I think there wasn't really a false answer in the list of answers, but I really like that people have looked at the take home message really well and answered early in life. I would like to add something to that, and that is uh, depicted here in the specified health management slide. During a pig's life, there are several transition moments that, uh, that result in threats. And these transition moments are, for example, being born, but also the weaning and the transition from the nursing phase to the fattening phase. And during these transitions, several things change. <coughs> The environment changes, the feed changes, and the piglets have to adapt to the new situation. In this situation, they are very vulnerable for threats like infections, but also for feed uptake. And during this period, when the piglets are very susceptible, it's very good to do microbiota management. So early in life, but also during transition periods, is a very good moment to apply microbiota management. There are several solutions on the slide how you can do microbiota management by nutraceuticals, by immunomodulation, or by maternal programming. And I would like to show you some examples of these uh, management measures. First of all, I would like to share some results with you of a study we did where we looked at the effect of probiotics in pigs. We had three groups of six piglets at weaning age. They were six weeks old. 
One group was treated with Lactobacillus plantarum, one group was treated with Lactobacillus casei, and we had a control group. The probiotics were administered daily, and the animals were sacrificed after eight days, and their gastrointestinal tract was sampled. We looked at microbiota composition, gene expression, and histology of the intestinal tract. First of all, we looked at the amount of, uh, of microbiota that was found in the jejunum of those pigs. In the picture, you can see that both the probiotic treated groups, the Lactobacillus casei and the Lactobacillus plantarum group, had an increased amount of microbiota in their intestine. And if you think about it, it makes sense. Normally, there are 10 to the fourth bacteria in the jejunum and we administered 10 to the 11th lactobacilli on a daily basis. That should increase the microbiota amount, and that is seen here in the picture. However, we also noticed that lactobacillus plantarum had a stronger effect on the amount of microbiota than lactobacillus casei. Subsequently, we also looked if the probiotics also changed the microbiota composition. And although the picture looked quite complicated, I will talk you through it. Every bar in this figure represents one piglet. And every color in the picture represents the different kind of bacteria that are present. The results are clustered based on the microbiota composition. And as you can see, all the piglets that were treated with Electobacillus plantarum are clustered together in one group. The middle group is a clustering of the piglets that were treated with Electobacillus casei. As you can see, there is one pig, the most right one, that clusters together with the control piglets. If you look at the colors, you can see that in the Lactobacillus plantarum group, there is a massive presence of green bacteria, and those represent the Lactobacillus plantarum. The same is true for the massive presence of the gray bacteria in the Lactobacillus casei group. So summarizing, the lactobacilli are dominantly present in the microbiota of the piglets in their jejunum. And the probiotic treatment induced changes in the microbiota composition because we can discriminate the groups based on their treatment. As I told you, probiotics, or sorry, microbiota, affect the immunological development of piglets. So next we looked at the expression of immune genes. And I only show you the results of the interleukin-6 expression that we monitored in the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. As you can see, there are no differences in the groups in the duodenum and in the jejunum. However, in the ileum, we saw a significant decrease of the, inter of the IL-6 gene expression in the uh, control group compared to the lactobacilli-treated group. The control group has a rather high expression of interleukin-6, whereas both the lexobacilli-treated groups have a decreased expression of interleukin-6. Interleukin-6 is involved in inflammatory responses. So obviously, lactobacilli treatment reduces the inflammatory responses in the ileum. And it's logical that we only see these changes in the ileum because the ileum is the place where all the immunological processes take place. The pyrus patches are located in the ileum, whereas the duodenum and the jejunum are less involved in immunity. So the conclusions from this study are that probiotics change the intestinal microbiota and affect the immune status of the piglets. Pre preliminary in vitro results I could not show you today indicate that probiotics also affect the immune response induced by E. coli, the causative agent of weaning diarrhea. Although the biological relevance of these findings is yet unknown, in humans, probiotics also dampen the pro-inflammatory responses to promote health of humans. So the current data suggests that probiotics in pigs might have beneficial effects on disease outcome, which is very interesting. And here's another poll question for you. There we go, let's start it. Um, <clears throat> we would like to know, are problem probiotics promising for pig husbandry? What do you feel? Is that yes, no, maybe, or you don't know at all? Let's see what um, what the answers are. And uh, who? That's um, unanimity here. Um, it's uh, virtually almost everybody is thinking that yes is the correct answer. 
that um, I'll display it here. Yeah, there we go. Now, it's gone back now. It's an overwhelming majority still. And you can see it about 76%. Um, yeah. Um, Clearly, there's something to it, right? Thank you, Vincent. I'm very glad that you acknowledge that probiotics are promising. I would like to come back to my take home messages. And I hope that I showed you that by this probiotic studies that interventions early in life, immediately after weaning, can shape the microbiota composition of the piglets. So obviously, the window of opportunity stretches until two weeks after weaning. I also showed you that gut microbiota is very important because it can affect the immunological development of the intestine. Now I would like to take it one step further and test a new hypothesis. We would like to see if the window of opportunity to induce changes in the intestine can be extended to in utero. Um, we want to test if maternal feed interventions can be used to manipulate the immune competence and microbiota development of the offspring, so the piglets. And we chose to use a model intervention, amoxicillin, to treat the sows. And you can debate whether amoxicillin is a feed intervention. I guess it's not, it's an antibiotic. But we really wanted to have a harsh intervention to show that there is a proof of principle. The experimental setup for this study was quite simple. Sows were treated with amoxicillin one week before farrowing. And subsequently, intestinal microbiota, gene expression and intestinal development was monitored over time in the piglets. First of all, we again looked at the amount of microbiota that was present in the offspring. Of course, amoxicillin is an antibiotic and it kills bacteria. But we did not see an immediate effect. On day one, immediately after birth, there was no difference between the treatment group and the control group. And the same was true on day seven after being born. However, at weaning on day 26, we saw that piglets that were derived from the control group, here depicted in pink, had more microbiota than the piglets that came from the amoxicillin-treated mothers. So the maternal amoxicillin treatment before farrowing reduced the microbiota quantity in the piglets at weaning. So there is a time effect. Again, I have a complicated picture for you, but I will talk you through it. We next looked what happened in the intestine of the piglets. And we did that by looking at gene expression over the whole, whole genome using microarrays so that we could study all the genes present in the intestine. I first want you to focus on the different colors that are used in this picture. On the lower left, you see the green dots. They represent the samples taken at day one. In the upper right, you see the orange dots that they were taken four weeks after weaning, so weaning plus 28 days. And all the colors in between are sequentially the timeline that we followed. So you see that the gene expression follows an intestinal development from the lower left to the upper right. And this represents normal intestinal in de development that occurs in all the piglets, independent of the treatments they received. If you now focus on the symbols, you can see that the closed circles are from the piglets that came from amoxicillin-treated sows. The open circles come from piglets that come from the control sows. And as you can see in the figure, they are always apart. So again, we can discriminate based on the gene expression between piglets that come from amoxicillin-treated mothers and piglets that come from control mothers. So summarizing, we see that gene expression shows the intestinal development the piglets go through, but also the gene expression shows differences between the groups. We next looked at the genes that were changing and what they were actually doing. So we did a functional analysis of all the regulated genes using an integration of all the results in networks. I will not try to make you understand the picture as long as you understand the conclusion. We saw that at weaning, there was a change in the genes involved in cell growth and differentiation. And therefore, we focused on this process. We looked at cell growth and differentiation in the intestine by counting the number of goblet cells that were present in the jejunum of those piglets. 
And as you can see, only on day one, there was a strong difference in the number of goblet cells between the piglets from the two groups. And there was a higher number of goblet cells in the piglets that came from the mothers that were not treated with amoxicillin. As you may know, goblet cells produce the mucus that protect the intestine against challenges from the outside. So based on this result, we can conclude that immediately after birth, the piglets from the control group might be better protected against challenges. We next looked at another aspect of cell growth and differentiation, the crypt depth and also the villus height, but I only show you the results of the crypt depth in the ileum. We showed that at weaning, when there was this difference in microbiota amount, there is a difference in crypt depth. The piglets that come from the amoxicillin treated mothers have increased crypt depth and this difference stays present also after weaning. We saw the same the statistically significant difference in the jejunum, but I will not show you these results. There was no difference in the villus length of those animals. So what we see is that the crypt depth changes in the piglets at weaning because of a treatment that was given to the sows before the piglets were even born. So based on this, we conclude that the maternal amoxicillin treatment before farrowing affects the intestinal development in the piglets. The amount of microbiota decreases, the gene expression in genes involved in growth and development decreases, we get deeper crypts without longer villi in both jejunum and ileum, and there are less goblet cells at birth. So based on this, we conclude that feed interventions can potentially change intestinal development and colonization. So if I come back to my take home messages, I hope I have convinced you that interventions early in life, two weeks after weaning or in utero before the piglets are even born can shape the intestinal development and microbiota composition. So the window of opportunity stretches at least from one week before farrowing until two weeks after weaning. These interventions early in life potentially have long lasting effects on gut health because the intestinal development is changed. Is changed. The gut microbiota is a very important factor and early life feed interventions have the potential to affect intestinal and immunological development. And with that, I would like to conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Astrid. That was a very interesting presentation and a rather long window of opportunity, I'd say. There's a lot of opportunities there. Um, <clears throat> there's quite a lot of questions having come in and we have a, a couple of minutes for a couple of questions. So I will uh, ask what the audience has, um, has asked. Of course. Uh, here's a question. Um, at what weight do you think that um, dietary fiber can be added to the diet and how does non-digestibility of the fiber in the lower gastrointestinal tract affect the gut? Um, well, I'm not really a nutritionist, but we do have some experience with, uh, with fibers. I think the difficulty is that you would like to add fibers as early as possible to help piglets overcome the weaning period. But it's very difficult to administer uh, fibers to very young piglets when they're still suckling with their mother. But I would say that is the ideal period. And I think the major target of the fibers would be the colon and not so much the, the jejunum and the ileum. But I'm quite sure they will have a bifidogenic effect there and might promote health based on literature. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers your question. That, uh, I'm sure it does. Here's another one. Um, is there a difference for the microbiota of piglets between uh, using in sows amoxicillin before farrowing and using amoxicillin in sows right after birth? Uh, that's a very interesting question, actually. Uh, we have done both, and it does really make a tremendous difference if you give the amoxicillin directly or indirectly to the piglets. We do see changes in both occasions, but the changes are totally different, um, both in the effect on the microbiota composition as well as on the gene expression. So yes, it, it works uh, either way, but it works differently. Mm -hmm. Following up on that, is there an increase of crypt depth in the amoxicillin group considered beneficial? Mm. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's, if it's beneficial. It would suggest there is more replication in the, in the intestine, and that could either be because um, it could be good because then you would have more surface, but it could also be bad if you need so much replication without an effect on the villus height, 
you might wonder what is going on in there. Is is there so much um, replacement needed? So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it is beneficial or not. Okay. And um, last question for you before we move to the next speaker. Um, how do organic acids affect, affect the gut, both positively or negatively? I wouldn't be so sure um, about positively or negatively. We have done studies with organic acid and we see tremendous effects. There are, uh, there are large changes, especially in gene expression. Um, and I know it's, they're broadly used to kill off the pathogenic bacteria. I'm sure they do that. But I'm not sure to answer your question uh, if it's beneficial or not.